I don't think I've ever heard the thyroid story because I just recently uh, was able to finally switch, get started on switching my meds too for that. So what, what was your thyroid? So I've been on supplementation probably for the past 30 some years. Um, yeah. And the endocrinologist that I saw had put me on a very, very high dose of uh, T4. And when I finally started looking at some of my, my thyroid markers, I knew they were out of whack. So I went to see an endocrinologist to argue with her for my change in medication. And one of the first things she, <laughs> well, one of the first things she started arguing with me about when she found out I was a biohacker um, was that, you know, my medication was way out of whack and I shouldn't be taking that high of medication. Of course, I had to explain to her, I did not pick that. Her father picked that. So <laughs> she yeah changed her tune quickly after that. Um, but yes, so we did a lot of changes over a period of months of uh, decreasing my dosage of T4. And then at one point, we ended up even including some T3 because I wasn't converting properly. So what was the dose of T4 that you were initially on? Um, I'm thinking it was like 250 micrograms. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah, it was high. Do you know what your free T4 was? Do you remember that just ballpark what that was? I, we could probably go take a look at that. I'm sure that's in here. Um, in fact, we can actually look at that. We can chart that if you want to see it. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. So let's go to thyroid health. Okay, Uh -huh. so... Which one you want to see first? Oh, wait. So yeah, that's free T4. Um, so yeah, early on, I can see values as high as two on the left. Oh, you're Yeah. looking at T3, but on the left, free T4 is on the, on the, on the, on my left, right? Free, In red. free T3, this one. No, above that, I'm looking at free T4. Oh, sorry. All right, let me Yeah. zoom in. So you had values higher than two. Look, I had one way up here at six. Well, it's crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's like, that's crazy that they, they would do that. Yeah. All right. And then still getting lower. Um, I'm aiming now for values around 0.8, even lower, maybe lower than the 0.75. It, free T4 increases, it, it, thyroxine increases during aging. Um, that's without a doubt. So uh, lower is generally better and all cause mortality risk lower is better. Um, All right, so free T3. Your average, but this is with, obviously this is with uh, prescription. Um, Correct. And you see I'm all over the place on that one. yeah. So my data, actually your lowest data, 2.5, I'm consistently, like, so you see below the red line, you have, Yeah. yeah, all of my data for like eight or nine tests in a row since I started, you know, digging deeper into this and, not taking my endocrinologist for, you know, just take T4. I just assumed, oh, they know better. And then I was like, no, nah, what? I'm going to look into it. All of my data has been 2.5, 2.3, and it, that's too low. I mean, uh, like you have, it declines during aging and lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So you've had it very high too, though. I mean, my gosh. Yeah. So what's your current dose of, what is it, I guess, Cytomel or... Um, let me think about that. I think I'm on 137 micrograms. Of Cytomel, so T3? I believe so. Man. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's T4. Yeah. T3, I think I'm on 25 micrograms. Oh, not bad. Interesting. How many tests did it take to, to get you onto that? So you, you basically cut T4 in half. Yeah, it took um, many, many months because she didn't want to, like, I think there was a good six months between each test because she didn't want to test any more frequent than that. Um, yeah. So I, I know we changed a couple of times through there, but I really couldn't tell you what the increments were. Do you know what her rationale was for not testing every six months or more than six months? <laughs> no, I don't think there actually was a rationale other than she didn't think the markers moved that quickly. That's ridiculous. I mean, T4, T3, when you take a pill of T3, it rises rapidly in blood. Um, So there's another confounding variable with my data because there were times that I would take my blood test before taking my morning medication, other times that I took it after. So that's going to change some of these values. Right? So when you when you test now, it's totally fast. It's just water, nothing else. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. I've also like just I've been intentional about the last couple of tests 
um, I think the last two tests I took, um, I did like, well, maybe the last three tests. I tried two hours after taking the medication, then four hours, and now I'm going for six hours. So I want to see what the what the difference is in that. Ah, interesting. Why not just uh, test first thing in the morning and not do any meds before the test? I have done that, and everything shows really low, of course, because there is no, you know, there isn't any uh, endogenous stuff floating in my system at that point. But But only then I, ah, then I see. I don't I'm... really know what the medication is doing when it's in. So, I mean, I know what things are going to be like when I'm off the medication, but, you know, what is the medication? Am I on the proper dose of medication is what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. So even if you took your medic, so when you take your uh, T4 and T3, do you take it in one dose or are you taking it in split doses? No, just one dose. Ah, so T3 has a, re so T4 has a relatively long half-life. So once per day can work for that, but T3 has a shorter It's half-life. very short, yeah. So I've been taking mine twice per day. I mean, my doctor said, take it three times per day. I'm not taking it three times per day. I looked at, I can send you, I can send you the, um, the uh, circadian rhythm for T3, the normal circadian rhythm for, for T3. And it peaks like two to 4 a.m. And then it also peaks at nine in the morning. So I've been taking my T3 with T4, some of it in the morning, soon like 9 a.m. And then before I go to bed, I'm taking, uh, what is it, 10, 10 micrograms of Cytomel so that I can get some of that peak in the middle of the night to try to, you know, after a couple hours, it'll be absorbed so that I should get that peak in the middle of the night. And then I'm taking it at nine in the morning. So I should get that peak. So my body looks like it's getting, it should get on that normal circadian rhythm for uh, what a healthy thyroid looks like. And just to be clear, the cytomel is the T3? T3, T3, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I've got a two split two doses. We did discuss that last time with my new doctor, not my endocrinologist, my, my current, you know, regular standard doctor. Um, we, may, we may look into that for this next period. Yeah, so when, when considering that, if you're taking it before you go to bed, you may not need to, you know, titrate the dose in the morning before a blood test. I mean, before bed, you should still have some amount that's still in the blood. Um, Yeah, then it would be valuable, for, I think, to take it completely fasted without my morning dose and then do the blood test to see. yeah. Uh, FT3, free T3 to free T4 ratio. Have you plotted that? Uh, yes, let me get this out of the way. That's over here. And what's crazy about that too is like, you know, I'm sure for the longest time with your blood test, they just did a TS TSH and, and uh free T4 and didn't even measure FT3. Oh yeah, if I was relying strictly on my my doctor or endocrinologist test, yes, they were not measuring anything. It was just usually TSH is like all they look at. Yeah. So the only reason I have these other data pointers data points are because I did them myself. So So how did you how did you look into the or you were just curious about how can I optimize thyroid function and then you were like, oh, I should be measuring FT3. Wow, yeah, yeah. because I was working on everything else and I had everything else I thought pretty well locked in, except my thyroid markers were way out of whack. Once I started working on the thyroid markers, it just, everything else just went to crap. So then I had to start all over again with trying to dial down everything else. So when did you get your, so all right, wait, so FT3, FT4, I was going to say, when did you get that ratio um, to relative, where it is now, relatively high? And then it looks like it's more recently that you've gotten it, or it's, this is a trend. The trend over time has been, you've been moving it in the right direction. Yeah. The last couple of tests, I've still got some things that, see now, uh, this is interesting. So my reference range is here lower than I have my optimal ranges. Huh. I mean, there may be some units. So you got to, uh, when, when you have FT3, it depends that you got to get the units. Cause you, usually it's like point, point three five point three seven is youthful. So there may be a unit difference cause you're the scale you've got it in like, you know, digits 3.7 and maybe, uh, a unit being off where it should be like point three six seven and point two six seven, but it's the same. It, it, it should be the same idea nonetheless, but, um, But moving in the right direction. Wait, so have you felt a difference in moving? No, Huh, interesting. no, no, not at all. Workout. That's the other maddening thing. I never knew I had a thyroid issue to begin with. Oh, man. I never, I never felt anything. You're supposed to have like, um, 
oh gosh, you're, you're supposed to be tired all the time. You're supposed to gain weight. You're supposed to have you know lack of interest in sex. Um, no, I had none of that. The only symptoms I had were like my nose would occasionally be cold, maybe fingers, maybe toes. That's it. I just assumed everybody had that. <laughs> and then after, since your thyroid FT3, FT4 has been increasing, cold nose, cold fingers and toes less or same? Less. Um, but of course, you know, most of the time when I'm indoors in the summertime, people have the air conditioning cranked up so high, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, most people I know are wearing gloves anyway. So <laughs> that's interesting that you don't feel a difference. I mean, so I, I've bat my battle for hypothyroidism is that whole thing, like get good sleep, still tired. Um, you know, how I, I could sleep. I could always sleep. I, you know, I'm, you know, oh, fingers and toes, always cold. nose always cold. So, uh, I even did an experiment on myself a few years back. This may be, uh, five or six years ago, I decided to just go cold Turkey and just stop taking all my thyroid medication. Cause I wanted to see what would happen. And again, I didn't feel anything. Hmm. I didn't feel any difference, but after maybe it was a month, I started noticing like bags forming under my eyes, like really bad bags. And I started noticing my hairline was thinning. And so it was the vanity aspect of it all that put me right back on it again. Wow. So I, I did that experiment too. I stopped all thyroid meds. TSH went way up. Um, and I felt even more tired than usual. 